Hello and welcome to a new Lua tutorial. In today's episode we will be discussing drawing your own images and I will be doing this using the example of compiling a boss sprite sheet and drawing different animation sequences from that. For this task I have chosen this boss which I have used for my Magma 2 level uh, because it has a very simple um, default sprite sheet and then has a second layer on top of that which I will want to spin around uh, in-game. The first thing I of course need to do is create a sprite sheet for that. This is uh, the sprite sheet I have come up with. It is making a few shortcuts. For example, I am assuming that every column has exactly two frames in it, which is true for these two columns, but uh, this one I have just duplicated the frame for for simplicity's sake. It uh, has three columns, one for an idle animation, which is only one frame, one for a attacking animation and one for a hurt animation. I've intentionally omitted a lot of these frames in order to uh, save us the time of doing transitionary periods. On top of that, I'm going to grab one of these sprites and create its own sprite sheet for that. And of course, I want to resize these to 200% pix pixel size in order to make our scaling life a lot easier. I will quickly import them into the folder and then we will move on to the Lua code and see how we can draw them. Okay, here we have our Lua code as well as the sprites inside of the folder. These uh, sprite sheets are available to us in Lua code through the function graphics.loadImage. One thing I want to note is that when you have these files not in this folder but for example inside the episode folder or inside a subfolder, uh, you can use file in order to make the game search for the sprite inside the level folder as well as the episode folder. And if you have like a centralized resources folder for example in your episode folder you can use resources slash boss.png which will then find it uh, even outside of the level folder. Now of course we're not doing that, I just quickly wanted to mention that because it is a really handy thing when you're working on your own episode and need to use graphics in several different levels at once. And now the question is how do we draw these? So uh, your first thought that you might have is of course in order to draw our image we need to do something in onStart so that we tell the program to get the image displayed. So why don't we do that? Uh, the drawing function, which we generally use, is graphics.draw. It can draw text as well as images, which is pretty handy, but we need to uh, specify a type as our type image. And then we can specify the image itself as boss, which is now our loaded image resource. We can specify an x coordinate, a y coordinate. We can uh, specify a priority which I'm gonna leave at zero for now and I'm going to leave it at that for now. So I'm going to go into the level and see how that looks. Now you might have seen something flash for a frame there. I don't know if the recording software picked it up but uh, that was actually the image getting drawn during on start. Afterwards it stopped being drawn which is because all of the graphics functions in Luna Lua draw for a single frame. This has some uh, reasons to it, which I'll get to in a second, but for the moment let's go into on draw instead of on start and take a look at this again. We can see up there, there's our boss sprite. Uh, it is currently displaying the entire sprite sheet rather than just one frame of course, and if we scroll the camera it will follow us around, which might not be an intended behavior for a boss of the likes. Uh, that is, however, an easy fix. We can uh, specify that we want to use the scene coordinates rather than the camera coordinates using the scene chords argument, which we just need to set to true. And uh, now it's gone because the 0, zero coordinates is, are nowhere on screen. This is why I got the cam x and cam y values up here, which are just the uh, values of the camera when the game starts. And now when we start scrolling, the boss starts disappearing. Of course, what we actually want is we want the 
boss to only display a single frame. So let me just get the boss further into the scene. Alright, now that our boss is more in the middle, let's take a look at how we can get it to display a single frame. Of course, priority is zero, that's why he is in front of us, but we can get to that in a moment. Uh, in order to display a single frame, we need to specify which part of the sprite sheet we want to draw. By default it draws the entire sprite sheet, but there are four values that uh, we can use to change that. These are source x, source y, source width, and source height. Of course I can already fill in two of these, because source width and source height are 38 for the sprite, for a single frame. What I want to do however is make that into a variable, which is just a uh, size is 38, so that we can easily just put the size in here, and if our size for our boss changes, we uh, don't have a problem with that. For source x and source y, for now I'm going to insert 0, just so that we can see um, what happens if we do that. Now we see only the top left frame. Now what it does is it uh, has the source x, y coordinate on the top left corner, and goes down 38 and 38 pixels in order to draw an image. If we were to change the source x variable, we could move it over here for example if it were 38, or over here if it were 76, and likewise if we change the source y variable we can uh, draw from down here instead. You might already be getting ideas for how we can accomplish animation with this. Since drawing only works for a single frame at a time, we can change which segment of the image we draw every frame in order to create animation. We can also shift between the different columns, and this is exactly why I have kept them all uh, uniform with the same amount of frames in each. Because this way we can just set up a static frame speed system and just switch around these rows whenever we need to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change, introduce a frame variable, which sits at 0 for now, and a state variable, which also sits at 0 for now. The state is going to be our column of the animation. We have the idle, we have the attack, and we have the hurt animation. So uh, the source x we're going to change to state times size, because that's the amount we want to move. If state were 1, we would be here, and if state were 2, we would be here, with 38 times 1 and 38 times 2 respectively. Same, likewise, we want to change frame times size, and now we have to create a little animation. The rule of thumb is to create any logic in on tick and any drawing in on draw because on draw runs while the game is paused, while on tick does not. The benefit to this is that uh, the boss would not animate while the game is paused, which is something we would usually want to avoid. Here we need to set the frame variable. What we uh, can set it to, of course, is just a very simple uh, equation which uses the lunar time a tick variable. In order to get us our animation, we want to take it modulo 2, so it's always 0 or 1, and a uh, good idea would be to math.floor time.tick times 0 0.125, so that every 8 frames this advances by a whole number, and we would get a frame change every 8 frames. This is like the equivalent to frame speed 8, because another way to phrase it would be division by 8. Since multiplication is generally faster though in code, I tend to use the decibel number here. So let's take a look again at how our boss is doing. Of course you cannot see a change because in our uh, state 0 there is no uh, change in animation. If we were to change the state to 1 however, you can notice a little bit of movement there on the mouth, which shows us that our system works. Uh, the state 2 is even more exacerbated. So now you can see very clearly that we have gotten our boss to animate. On that occasion I'm also going to change the priority to minus 30, for example, so that it renders behind the player, which renders at minus 25 himself. This is almost everything uh, we can do with graphics.draw. There is one more thing, which is opacity, which we can also set to something else, uh, just if we wanted to have a semi-transparent image drawn. 
It's very simple, but gets many jobs done. Now, one thing I mentioned earlier is that uh, these shards, which we have no, not yet touched, uh, use rotation in the boss fight. So if I were to set up an entire boss around this here, which I am not going to do, I'm just going to handle the drawing type, of course, uh, we would need to make them rotate somehow, which is something graphics.draw does not cover. However, there is a very simple way in which we can um, adjust for this, which is using the sprite class, which allows us to make more complicated animations very easily. So, uh, we can create a single shard object by using sprite, and then the uh, named arguments constructor for it, similar named arguments to graphics.draw, where we can specify an image once more. Of course, one thing that would be helpful to specify it would be an X and Y coordinate. Uh, since I have some down here and I want the shards to be centered on the boss object itself, uh, one idea would be, of course, to save that into a local variable. I'm going to store it in a vector so that we can quickly access this it with boss position x and boss position y. Now that we have this object set up, we need to still draw it. Uh, this object only contains all the logic for the sprite, and we need to uh, call draw code ourselves using a shard object draw with our named arguments in which we can copy the priority and scene coordinates in order to see what is going on. Of course, I should correct this typo where I had specified the x coordinate as boss position at y. And now we can see that the image is in the same position as the boss image. Uh, one thing worth noting here is, of course, that it seems they are top left centered. This is true for uh, Smebex sprites by default, since the top left corner of the image is the origin of the image. Of course, there is uh, there are ways to circumvent that. Uh, for example, one thing we can do is we can offset the boss sprite over here by 19 pixels because it's half the image's uh, size, or minus 0.5 times size, in order to uh, center it on the boss coordinates. Now, the top left corner of the small shard is uh, is centered on the center of the sprite. We can do further changes to this using uh, some handy information in shard.lua with the align function, which can be set to sprite.align.center. Of course, it shouldn't be capitalized. Uh, using this, we can see now that they are perfectly centered on top of each other. Instead of centering it, however, I will set it to the bottom. Uh, in order to get it to like hug the uh, edge like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sprite and rotate it by 90 degrees and save it again. So that we just have a starting point pointing upwards. Now we have a single shard which we can now rotate using shard object rotate 1. 1 is the degrees and angles it should rotate per frame, and now as you can see we have some simple sprite rotation going on, and if we now change the priority to be like minus 31, we will have it draw it behind the boss and create the effect we saw on the sprite sheet. Now of course on the sprite sheet there were 4 of these, and we can simple, simply quantify this code by creating a shard object table instead. In the shard object table we can take care of all of our shard objects we will need by creating a for loop uh, that runs exactly four times. We create an iterator that will be one, two, three or four depending on the uh, for loop iteration. And inside we can put this code, we can create this shard object and then call table insert uh, shard object table and then shard object. Of course um, the rotation will be off so what we can do is we can call rotation is 90 times i. We can use this iterator to perform math inside of here to 
change the initial rotation of the shard object itself. Now the next thing we need to do is to loop over the shard object table, do, and then we can rotate them like this. Rotate each individual shard object and we do the same one for the drawing call and Inside we will now have our four loops taking care of all the rotation for us, for all four of them. What I want to do is, instead of like implementing an entire bus routine, I want to just put a simple example of how we can go about a state change. We're going to reset the state to zero. And uh, I, what I'm going to do in on tick is, I'm going to make it so that the player can jump on the bus. So what I want to do is I want to create a boss collider box which is at boss position dot x minus 0.5 times size so that it's centered properly boss position dot y minus 0.5 times size so that that's also centered properly and I'm going to debug it for the time being so that we can see what's going on and instead of untick. I'm going to call, I'm going to check if colliders that bounce player on the boss collider state is true. So that then we will switch into the state. I forgot to uh, specify the width and height of the collider, which should be just size and size. Now, as you can see, there is now a red box over the boss, and if I jump on him, he will change this animation. We can uh, also give the player a bounce response, which will allow him to bounce off the bounce when he hits him. Now that's pretty neat. Of course, uh, I should note that this is all pretty messy when it comes to boss code in particular. However, I hope it got the concept of drawing with the graphics.draw as well as the sprite class across pretty well. One thing we will do in the future is return to this code in order to clean it up a little and uh, first of all make sure that we aren't uh, relying so heavily on position updates because one weakness of keeping all these positions separate like this is that if we were to change boss position dot x and on tick then we would have the following issue the main body would start drifting away and leave everything else behind, including the collider. So I could jump over here and the boss would change its frame over there, which is of course not what we want. There are ways to clean this up, of course, the simplest being to simply update the position of everything else to the boss position. However, we can do better than that, but that's something for another episode. Here in this example, I'm also moving the collider, but I forgot to add the offset as well. So, I hope you learned something today, and I'll see you next time.